Hey, I'm Hugh with Hugh Scan Products, and I'm here today with my Razer E300. A viewer asked me to show a video of how to do a motor controller, battery, and throttle upgrade, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. I also added this little voltmeter here, which has a 3D printed case I designed, um, so that way I have a little bit of a fuel gauge to tell me how much battery I have left. Before we get into the upgrades, I just want to explain to you why you should upgrade this. First of all, cost versus performance. For a total cost of between $150 and $200, depending on where you source your parts and your scooter, you can have a scooter that's capable of going 22 to 23 miles an hour and has a 10 to 12 mile range. If you bought a brushless hub motor cheap 8 inch scooter, that thing would have a maximum of 12 miles an hour and probably the same 12 mile range. Also. This thing is solid. It's made from solid steel. These things are prevalent. You can find them in most places and in most countries of the world. Um, they have 10 inch, really nice pneumatic tires that help absorb shocks, even though they don't have shock absorbers. But shock absorbers are just one more thing to break. This thing is super simple. It's like a Volkswagen Beetle. It's ultimately upgradable, but it just starts out bare bones, simple. So let's get into it. This is what's called a level one upgrade meaning we're just going to be upgrading the motor controller and the throttle and we're going to be adding a little voltmeter gauge up here to tell how much charge we have left also a little tail light having a little running light is very safe most scooters have them this one does not stock this over here is a level two upgrade if you can see i have a 1500 watt brushless motor on there and i have to make a spacer because the battery in the new controller will not fit in that that requires some drilling some extra metal some more pieces that's that's a level two or three upgrade on the razor i still am trying to keep it stock looking though but this one to do just a level one upgrade you're going to need some tools some electrical tape a phillips head screwdriver a small flathead screwdriver some scissors you're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers or an eight millimeter wrench. And you're also going to need your new stuff for the upgrade. You're going to need new batteries. I recommend 36 volt, 4.4 amp hour batteries at the minimum. You can get, you know, a regular e-bike battery that's 36 volt, 10 amp hour or something. You just got to make sure that it fits in here. You're also going to need your upgraded brushed motor controller. Now, any brushed 36 volt 500 watt motor controller will work they start at like 10 bucks you know you probably get one for 15 still in the u.s you're also going to need a variable throttle these start at like seven dollars this one's a little bit fancy because it has the voltmeter built in i think this one is like 12 dollars. so these were 70 dollars total when i bought them i don't know if you can still get hoverboard batteries anymore but that was a pretty good deal also you're going to need a new charger to charge your batteries I cut off the end of this charger and cut, uh, attached the end to the old Razer E300 so I could use the original charge port on the Razer. So, first step, remove the deck. Take off the two front screws, the two middle screws, and the two Allen screws. In the middle and then on the back you're gonna need a little wrench underneath and these are normally phillips head screws back here but i have allen so what you do is you take a wrench and then underneath up here you see that little that bolt oh there we go and then you can unscrew it from the top that's how it comes off once you have that deck off, you need to remove two Phillips head screws to take out the battery protector bar. Then unplug all of your batteries. Unplug your batteries, get them out of there. Your little connectors here. These things have a little tab on the side. Push on the tab, slide them out. See this right here, push on the tab. Slide it out, remove your old motor controller and your old batteries. Unplug every single one of these things. Don't break any of the wires because we're going to be reusing some of the clips. And then you're ready for your new motor controller. 
So, after you undo all the connections and take the old motor controller out, you're going to come up to the handlebars. And there is one Allen key screw right there that you have to lefty loosey and then there's a rubber grip here. You slide your rubber grip off, take that off, undo these these wrappy roundy things, cut the zip ties, and you're going to remove your old throttle cable like that. There's a wire grommet down there. You might have to take the end off of this to get it. To take the end off of these is real easy. I'll show you. If you can see, there's a little clip right there. There's a little clip on the middle tank. We push the clip in. See how that one is bent in now? And now we can... So we push it in, then we can slide that wire out. All right, next one. You're going to push it over, and we're going to slide it on out. Now that we have our old throttle off, we're going to install our new throttle. This one has a little Allen key hole that goes in the bottom. So we're just gonna slide that on the handlebar and we are going to route the wire. I have mine inside a sleeve, inside a heat shrink, but we're gonna route that wire next to your brake cable wire. And those are gonna follow the same original route Hooking up the motor controller is the most important part of this upgrade. So I have all the components here on the bench so I can show you the correct way in a brightly lit, easy to demonstrate environment, how to hook them up. So the first thing that I have hooked up is my new voltmeter. Um, this obviously is an is exaggeration. This thing is not gonna be this close. We're gonna be, you know, have like a three foot wire extension running this. And I have my positive connected to the um, positive of the 36 volt indicator gauge as well as my uh, voltage checking line. So I have both the yellow and the red going to the positive and the black going to the negative. Now I highly recommend that you use these automotive connectors is what they're called. They're two pin for these ones. There's a couple, there's one three pin for the throttle and then there's a two pin for the motor and the battery. I highly recommend those, but a lot of people don't have them. So I'm going to show you another way to hook them up. You can just use these spade connectors like this. Just make sure that they're insulated um, beyond at the base here because they don't slide all the way in and we don't want them touching and, and shorting out. So I'm going to show you how to do it without and with those. So if you do have the connectors, hook them up in the right orientation. Um, you can see the little spring clips on that. They all go, you can see the little gaps in the holes. Make sure that when you have your throttle cable specifically, that you have your positive five volts, your ground, and then your signal wire in the correct order. Sometimes they're not in the same order on your motor controller. If these aren't labeled, do a Google Translate or something to find out which one is your throttle. Your throttle has three wires usually a red wire, a black wire, and then some usually green, blue, white, whatever. That's your signal wire. So make sure they line up. Make sure when you're putting these little pins on, these little spade connectors, that they slide in to the right holes so that way they line up right and double check. Red's going to red, black's going to black in the middle, and the signal wire's at the bottom. So we have our throttle hooked up. Next, we can hook up our charge port. This we're going to hook up the other way, the way that's not preferred, but you know, if you just have some spade connectors, usually there's an extra, there's an actual uh, 
thing left on these after you do the upgrade so you don't need to do this but make sure they're insulated again at the base and then you're going to find your charge port on your thing look at that it says charging port so we're going to make sure that the red is going to the positive and the black is going to the negative but this is like kind of a shady connection here so you know we're going to take a small piece of electrical tape and secure these in here and like i said this is not the preferred way it's way better to use the both side automotive connectors but a lot of people do this i'm showing you either way brake light we're not going to use i use my brake light as an indicator light so i hook it up to the 36 volt the same place i hook on my voltmeter but i'm not going to show you that on the bench for right now so we're not using the brake light throttle we have hooked up motor the motor you can usually identify because it's the other fat wires the uh Power wires are usually fat and the motor wires are fat. And the power wires are usually red and black and the motor wires are usually something other than red and black. Um, if the connectors don't fit, again, take a small flathead screwdriver and see the gap right there. And you can push down and you can slide these out and put the connector that's on. Steal the old connector off of the old motor controller if, uh, the new one and the new motor controller doesn't fit because you know the one in the the razor fits the one in the old motor controller there you go so your motor's connected the last thing we're going to connect is the battery so we'll come back to that switch we're going to use the original switch usually it says power or or uh and uh i don't know it's the switch look up on the the wiring diagram for the the motor controller you bought and for this we are going to put the, the, the bottom wire on the switch to the, the positive uh, wire on the output. Otherwise, the, um, the on and off light will stay on no matter whether it's on or off. So we want to make sure that we put the, the red going to the bottom and then the, the uh, black coming back to the other side of the switch. The charge port... <laughs> If you can see connects to the ground to the top of the switch that's what gives this switch its ground so you can see um, whether it's on or not and um, the charge port is already connected so we have those two connected now we just need the brake so the brake indicator does, isn't just like um, it does it's just a switch you just have to close it so it doesn't matter whatever um, Whatever side, positive or negative, does not matter. You can just um, plug in whatever the original brake wires that are coming down. I don't think plug into this. I think they're like reversed. So I think you have to cut them off and add a couple spade connectors or, um, you know, add change a different connector. But you want to plug. It doesn't matter which one you plug in, but you want to plug those in because that shuts the motor off when you hit the brakes. So that way you can't like accelerate and brake at the same time. All right, so we're, we don't have to hook that one up on the bench right now, but that one's really simple. It doesn't matter which way it goes in, but you need to plug hook these up. The power wire. All right, so power. Coming from the battery, we have our pigtail, and it's very important that these connections are done well. You can buy these, or you can make one. If you make one, I recommend soldering these before you shrink wrap them. So the positive is going to go to the line side of the breaker. You know that's sitting over here in your razor scooter and the negative side is going to go to the negative side of the power in and you are going to need a little jumper wire to go from the load side of the breaker to the positive side of that now we are all wired up let's uh carefully without stressing or straining any of these wires we're gonna get this motor controller up into the corner up here. So that way we have room for our two batteries. Okay. You can see I have a little piece of a uh, foam here. I'm going to put a little bit better 
I'm going to make sure that my power switch is off. No explosion, no explosion. Sometimes they spark a little. And this is not pressing down on the batteries too hard. If, if it is, take it out because you do not want a lot of pressure on those batteries. You want them held in place, kept from bouncing around, but you do not want these batteries to be super insulated. So once I get this thing attached, I'm actually going to cut away a little bit of that insulation so that way these things can, or a little bit of that padding so these things can breathe a little bit better. There we go. All right. So here is the moment of truth. Let's turn it on. Looks like we got a light, red light. Let's see which way the motor, the battery, the back wheel spins. We got a runner. Again, when you're tightening these down, do not tighten them down super tight. You want them tight enough so they don't vibrate out, but if you tighten them down too tight, they will dent into the aluminum and they'll strip out the plastic deck. So just tight enough to not vibrate out. Same thing with these. Just tight enough not to vibrate out. Hey, the scooter is all done. We tested it, it should be running. It's time to take it for its first ride. Unfortunately for me, it's dark out, but fortunately for you, it is already tomorrow. <laughs> So that's it. Have fun. Do this at your own risk. Take your time. Make sure you make good connections and have fun. If this helped you out, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I really appreciate it. You guys have a good day.